All right, ladies and gentlemen, your next speaker is from our platinum sponsor, Quantum. A warm welcome, please, for Mr. David Noon, who will be coming up to talk about several interesting things. Mr. David Noon, come on up here. Your applause, ladies and gentlemen. There you are. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Well, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, some of you uh, recognize my smiling face from last year. I hope, I, I would love to find out, you know, one of these days, so maybe after this presentation, if any of you remember what I said last year. So that's, that's uh, something we'll find out. So let's see how we do. So last year I, I stood up and I talked to you a little bit about, um, about strategy in general, and, and I used uh, a framework called Blue Ocean Strategy. And you might have remembered uh, a little bit about that, at least the name Blue Ocean Strategy. And, uh, you know, strategy is great. I, I enjoy doing strategy. It's wonderful. But the problem with strategy is that if you don't actually execute the strategy, then what for, right? So the test of any strategy is really, can it be executed? You know, can you actually do it? So one of the things we did talk about last year was uh, what, what Quantum was doing uh, and its strategy. And so let's see, let's have a look back and see how did Quantum do over the, the last year. So as we do this, um, you know, perhaps you've, you've heard a little bit about what Quantum does and how they're organized, but the numbers uh, kind of stand out. You know, eight times increase. Um, I'm using some of GFK's uh, data here, so uh, you can double check it with them. It's really quite astounding. Um, Ranked number four in terms of volume in, in their segment. Great result. And for, for one shining moment uh, earlier this year, was uh, we made it up to number three uh, in, in that category as well. So that was a great result. And so we've won a few awards and all that. It's very nice. And we thank you uh, all for your help. So I, I wanted to test out that, that applause meter. It looked like a great, uh, great thing to do because I want to give you a, a round of applause, actually. So what I really wanted to do was to thank our partners and, uh, you know, for helping us to, to execute that strategy, to actually make it work, right? Uh, we had 73% growth, uh, really a great year for us and for our partners. So I'd like, uh, if we could help me, with a round of applause for our partners and, and everyone who helped. And if you bought a quantum device, thank you. Come on, come on, yes, good, great job. Well, so I'd like to talk to you again this year a little bit about strategy and, and see if I can share some insights and some ideas. And when, when Dr. Rudy was sharing, you know, the first word that caught my attention was this word innovation. I thought, great, I'm, I'm in business for the coming year. That's good to know. We need to innovate. But one of the things we need to do when we're, when we're planning a strategy is we have to understand what it is we're trying to achieve. What battle are we trying to win? You know, there have been different kinds of strategies over the years, and, and uh, you know, all the way back to Sun Tzu and the art of war, and this is uh, the Battle of Waterloo up here. Uh, so that strategy didn't work out too well. Uh, for, for Napoleon in, the, in that case, but different kinds of strategies. So if it's a military strategy, okay, great. If you're fighting a war, that's what you need. If you're playing sport, let's say soccer, and if you're Arsene Wenger scratching his head, you're wondering, well, what went, went wrong with my strategy this year? Have any Arsenal supporters here? No? Okay, I'm alone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, there's two of us. All right. Well, it didn't quite work out for us this year, okay? So sometimes the strategy, you do your best, you get close, but not quite. But if you try to take a soccer strategy and apply it to a different sport, you're definitely going to have a problem. So if you go to the Olympics thinking, okay, I'm going to play you know, this certain way and forget about all the other sports, you're going to not come away with any victories. So when, when we think about strategy, we want to know what we want to achieve. It's very simple. Logic, okay, what do we want to achieve? So my question to you, just to ponder for a moment, is what are you actually trying to win at? We're talking about a winning strategy for your organization, 
uh, when, you, when you think about innovation, when you think about reaching new markets, new customers, what are you trying to win at? If you are trying to win at, well, we, our specs are better than yours kind of game, then you're going to end up, uh, I, I think, fighting this continual sort of downhill battle as things go on. Is there another way we can, we can focus ourselves? Is there something else we can focus our attention on? All right, that's a question we need to answer. So once upon a time, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Henry Ford. Any of you heard of Henry Ford? Yes? Henry Ford? Any of you own a Ford? No, it's OK. You don't have to answer that one. Um, in his day, at the turn of the century, he was the little guy. He was the guy who was up against the Goliaths of the industry. He had 500 competitors, and he was just a little startup. He even had to fight, legally fight, in, in federal court in the US for the right to make his automobile. Uh, the industry players were trying to stop him from making it at all. So the little guy can eventually overcome and can really change and revolutionize an industry. And that's something you need to bear in mind when you think about what you want to win. Because it's not necessarily going to be easy. You need to fight. Uh, Elon Musk is the, the CEO and the founder of SpaceX. And that's another company that's really revolutionized that industry. But he was just a little guy, just a, a startup. And yet, look what he's done. right? So it's not really about what resources you have at your disposal, but how you make use of those resources and the kind of resolve and the dedication and the effort that you put in to execute your strategy that makes all the difference. Now, as Rudy, Dr. Rudy pointed out, things are changing faster. You know, uh, the time it takes to get your, your devices sold and to reach you know, some number that you set, that goal that you set, you can get there. You can, you can make that happen. And that, all those things are happening faster, but think about what that does to our society and, and to us poor guys who are trying to come up with new ideas all the time. So now we have to come up with new ideas faster and faster, innovate more often. Right? The world population is growing really rapidly, as you know. And so there's going to be more consumers out there. That's good news. But you know, everything is changing so much faster. Data requirements uh, changing faster. This number's from Cisco. Sorry, Dr. Rudy, that one's not from you. But um, we do appreciate all your, all your help and your work. So data traffic's growing really, really fast. Everything's changing fast. So does your strategy need to change fast? Or can you set a strategy and let it run for 10 years? Anyone tried that? Probably not here. Right, so, <laughs> so I want to share a couple of thoughts on creating a win winning strategy. Just three simple principles or ideas that, that uh, I've taken from various different kinds of uh, different theories about strategy that that people have developed on different ideas about innovation. So the first is you need to create something really compelling in terms of the value proposition you offer your, your clients and your customers. The second is the way that you go about this, the whole sequence of things. And so getting that, that value proposition, pricing it right, and then getting the right cost structure in place and driving that cost structure uh, continually is a really key part of creating a profitable strategy. And I'll, I'll talk some more about this last one, but create the kind of company uh, that you want to have. You know, create it on purpose. Design your company as well as your product. Spend as much time and effort thinking about who you want to be as an organization uh, is an important thing. So let's talk about those a little more. When you go about trying to create a compelling product, a value proposition for your clients, and you look at the data that, that Dr. Rudy's presented, that GFK has come up with, and you look at your own studies and those things, sometimes it's very hard to find out what it is that you should actually innovate and focus your attention on. So our friend Henry uh, Ford, he, he said that, well, you know, if he'd asked people what they wanted, they would have said, I want a faster horse. They didn't really know what they needed. Uh, Steve Jobs had a similar sort of saying that 
sometimes you, you, you know, it's, it's really tough to design new products because people don't know what they need until you show it to them. You know, five years ago, did you know you needed an iPad? No, never heard of it. And five, you know, four years and uh, eight months ago, you're like, oh, yeah, I need an iPad, as the iPad was launched. So sometimes we need to get ahead of where the consumers are. And looking back at data and what's going on uh, helps us, it serves a purpose, but we need to take some risks. We need to explore, we need to prototype, we need to find out uh, what people want and what they need. You know, at Quantum, one of the things that we, we honed in on is reliability and quality. And we used that to really underscore all of the other things that we've done. So we know that people want quality, and they want to be able to rely on it. I'm spending money for this device. I want to know that it's going to work. And so we came up with this, this three-diamond uh, warranty. The other thing, of course, I mentioned is to be able to price what you're doing in the right way and then drive your costs so that you can always deliver that at a profit. Right, so we have very aggressive pricing at Quantum, yes, but we do that because we know we can drive the cost structure and we can maintain that and we can reward our partners and those who work with us. And so, you know, that's something you need to bear in mind. The SpaceX uh, is one example, the Henry Ford and the Model T, the same sort of thing. You know, at SpaceX, you know, rockets are big, expensive things. It costs NASA $1.5 billion to launch a space rocket, a rocket into space, right? It costs him now $61.9 million to launch that rocket into space. If you'd like your own rocket in space, you know, you want to put something up there, you've got an old car you don't want anymore, you can send it up. It'll only cost you $61, $62 million something to uh, propose to your CEO when you get back to the office, right? Um, so it would be quite the PR stunt. Um, Henry Ford had the same idea. You know, okay, I set the price, but now I need to drive my cost structure. I need to hone that down so I can save money. Now, the last point is, is where I want to really emphasize. This is something for all of you who own or manage or run a company. Put some thought and some effort into designing your organization so that you will be the organization people want to work for, that you would be the organization people want to partner with. What does that mean? Think about your attitudes, uh, the way you do things, the culture of the organization, about your ethics, about how you stand in the marketplace. Do you stand behind your product? No questions asked, 100% of the time. Can you do that? Right? You need to have those principles in place and stand with them. And so, you know, there are a lot of companies that, that advocate this and a lot of people talk about it, but, but the simple truth is it's, it's a very hard thing to do. Uh, Richard Branson, you know, famously does this kind of thing. He creates a very strong culture in his organizations and he's in favor of this saying. Now, I'm not sure if that will go over too well in a room full of salesmen, but uh, you know, there it is, right? Money's not the only thing in business, okay? It helps us keep score, but it's not the only thing that we should think about, right? How do we touch people's lives? How do we affect their lives for the better? And of course, uh, our friend uh, Tamir, uh, you'll find this quote from him, but the best companies are often the companies that know they still need to learn and improve. You know, you need to keep humble and you need to keep asking. And that's how you can go out and discover what customers really want, even before they know. If you're humble and you have that attitude, you'll be able to learn where you need to go. So stay humble, uh, be flexible, build trust and respect between your own teams, between those of you here at Distri. Get to know some people you don't know, just get to know them. Not, don't try to sell them everything. Uh, you, you can be on the clock, but you know, maybe at, at 9 o'clock tonight, you say, okay, I'm not selling now. I'm listening. I'm making a friend. Do that. Build, build your network. Build your relationships. Show your character. Show who you really are. Okay? So I'd like to really you know, encourage you to do that. 
So a little bit more about quantum, what we have coming up for the next, uh, the next 12 months. Right? So we've, we've mentioned what happened in the last 12 months, well, what's happening now. Um, just a couple of brief announcements. We'll, we'll keep going, of course. We, we keep standing behind our, our three-year, you know, three diamonds warranty. It's a great program. Uh, if any of you have got one of our devices and something goes wrong, and we know that very few of them go wrong because we spend a lot of time on the quality. Um, so you know that, you can, that we're standing behind it. Um, we're expanding our presence, and so you'll see you know, new locations, new operations coming up. Uh, but a couple of other things. Okay, so the first is that we will be uh, launching a range of phones. Um, the Quantum Tatano is out there. You can have a look at it. It feels really great in your hands. It's a fantastic device. So take a look at that. And we'll be releasing some details of, of another new solution uh, in the next uh, few months. And so that's the Quantum Medical Solution. And uh, you know, it'll, it'll really revolutionize some, some things in the industry. So we, we are really excited about that. Uh, you might hear a little bit more about that over the next few days, but details will come uh, in the, the next quarter. Okay, that's the Titano phone. If you haven't seen it out there, take a look. Uh, I appreciate your, your time, and I want to again say thank you to all our partners and to all of you who would be or could be or would think about being our partners. Come on, have a, have a talk to us. Our booth is just outside the door here, so you can do that. And I think we have some quantum team members sitting around here looking handsome. Very good. So thank you, everybody. And uh, I appreciate your time, your energy, and your attention. And so remember, keep innovating. All right. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, huge round of applause for David Noon.